Greetings. Hello to everyone. This is Lisa. Well, today is Friday and uh, it is not Heal Talk Tuesday time. But uh, I am here to talk about something very important. Uh, I posted something this yesterday uh, afternoon and it was a post about one of the big challenges that are happening amongst teens nowadays in schools, uh, among children and everyone. Uh, and the post was first and foremost about an Arkansas girl that was burned and died because uh, she drank hot boiling water. And another case that happened, another 11 year old that uh, was challenged and uh, she was hospitalized and she died. And the latest was, post was about this young teenage boy that went uh, and spent the night with friend's house and the kids just poured hot water on him as a prank. So why did I bring this up? And I've received a few calls and private messages plus uh, all the messages that are the posts and everyone making a comment about this. I work with self-esteem. It's one of the biggest things that I work with, either adults or teenagers. Here's why. Any habit or behavior that we want to change, first and foremost, I help my clients to raise their self-esteem up and become more confident, and then the changes happen. So if there is a habit we want to change, a behavior, a, um, a what we call addiction, and I will be talking about addiction more and the, the underlying effects of addiction and why we are addicted to certain things. But today, it's about this topic of teenagers doing things uh, and accepting challenges. Why? Because they want to be accepted. Teenagers, uh, just like adults, we go to clubs, we go to organizations, and we want to be part of a group, part of find our tribe. That's what churches used to be. And even children, I mean, let's go back. Even when we think about West Side Story, it was rivalry, it was gang, it was acceptance, it was I belong. So there is a lot of challenges that are going on. I mean, when they do hazings in universities, in colleges, that's what it is. Show me, even gangs, go show me that you can pull this off and then we will accept you in our gangs or in our group or in our tribe, right? Or in our clique. Every one of us, not everyone, but as children, they're not as aware of this clique and that clique. Do I want to belong to that clique or not? But when we are impressionable as children, as teenagers, you know, Everyone wants to be loved and accepted and appreciated and belong to a group. So they accept challenges. And I know I had a mother here just 10 days ago that brought her teenage daughter that was doing something because she was under pressure and to belong to a team. And she brought her daughter over here just to put some sense in her because they always argued. And the teenager wanted to do that because she truly believed that group is her ticket to the next level. Whatever it is, I'm not going to share over here. But I want more parents to be cognizant, to be aware, to look for signs that your child is withdrawing or is in fear of, either being bullied or in fear of, is having anxieties, 
there's issues in school or after school. You know, it could be after school. It could be what people she knows, even if it is not after school. We know that uh, abuse, domestic abuse, happens from the people we know. It's not from the people we don't know. So that can also put a lot of pressure on a child and be in fear of speaking up in order for him or her, especially her, because it's 79% to 85% she that is being abused. And I'm not saying boys don't. But for them, when they show signs of anxiety out of the norm, when they show signs of withdrawal, before you take them, and this is my humble opinion, before you take them to a psychiatrist for them to put on a depression medicine, please have them speak to a therapist. Me as a hypnotherapist, I am not your psychologist, but as a hypnotherapist, I go to the core, I treat the person as a whole. We tap into the subconscious mind and work my entire mission is working with self-esteem. If our self-esteem is not up, then it's so much harder for us to say no to peer pressure, either for abuse, for bullying, for anything. That's why when they cannot speak up and they are afraid, they become anxious. Their behavior changes. They become angry because underneath anger, it's hurt. Underneath all the pain and suffering is hurt. Hurt of not being able to express. Hurt of not being able to talk about it. And because they're in fear. So this is a caution to all parents, to all caregivers. And I know we have seniors who also go through this and especially seniors with dementia do not leave your seniors alone for too long because they might be suffering some also um, if they are under someone else's care and that's all I want to say about seniors but this is not about that this is about our children this is about our teenagers you know I've talked about this many times the front, that label, that uh, the, the masks that we wear, and that, yes, I can conquer, yes, I can do this, yes, I am able, especially for children when they come with this front that they can handle everything. Sometimes you may not know what pressures they are under. So have a dialogue. And I know some moms say, my son does not talk to me. It's so hard to communicate with my son because they don't express themselves the way I can talk to my daughter. Please, even boys go through a lot of suffering, abuse, and bullying. And they are the ones who might be more withdrawn and shy to talk about it because, on the other hand, boys are supposed to be strong they're supposed to handle everything. They're not supposed to cry. And that's not true. When we cry, we're not crying for you. We're not crying because of weaknesses. No one cries because of being weak. We cry because we feel within ourselves. And tears come rolling because we feel it. Now, it's good to know what is it that they feel. So this message... I just wanted to share this so that we can all become more aware. And it doesn't matter if it is your child or the child of a neighbor or a child from a cross. And this is not for you to be a narc that when you see something, call the social services or the police department. But it's open communication. Sit down with your children. Please, a week ago, we were at dinner, 
and here it is mother father and a teenager not even a teenager probably be a love 11 or 12 years old mother is on the phone father is on the phone teenagers on the phone <laughs> can we just have a family get together and talk maybe that is the best time away from the house that we can talk about everything that the threat of the house or the pressure of the house is not there just a suggestion just a suggestion for you to have an open dialogue and if you see marks on the children if you see marks even bruises on your children on your teenagers please ask them girls will truly be quiet because they want to be cared for or they want their boyfriend to like them and if that boyfriend is telling her what to do what not to do what to wear when to come when not to come please I would say yank that child of yours away from that person and then you communicate so let us come together as a tribe as adults as caregivers and the people who love our family and raise the bar of their self-esteem I always talk about it's time to evoke what was embrace what is and evolve to what it is that we want and I help the person as entirely so that they can be entirely the person that these deserve to be oh salam khanum garusi salam <laughs> how are you it's so good to see you here hi nelly how are you sweetheart how is back east um hi ani john i was talking about teenagers and the post that i did about uh kids being challenged and um, one of the biggest challenges that it's happening around the country is that friends make their friends drink hot boiling water and if you want to join if you want to do anything and some kids have died from that I work with children there is nothing I have not seen there is nothing that I have not heard and if I haven't or don't know how to treat it I will always find another caregiver another therapist another person who knows better but um, I'm here I'm here for you I'm here for your teenagers I want to love all family but some of them not worth it <laughs> you know and that's a whole different story mrs. Garusi some of them may not be worth it and if you are putting energy somewhere that it's not enhancing who you are or enhancing your family then it is your decision not to feel resentment anger and hurt and step aside remove yourself because we cannot remove others we cannot change others we cannot um, change other people's behavior but we can change our own so if something is bad it's a bad environment or it's a negative energy if it is a destructive environment we step away so I hope that is beneficial to you because you are in total control of who you want to associate with and who you want to be with you see this is exactly the same it's not only for adults and children it's for all of us sometimes even adults we feel as if we are stuck somewhere because of association and family and yet we can distance ourselves maybe if we are seeing them once a week we can make it once a month and you know I, I've said this I say talk to the hand 
right? I'm busy, talk to the hand, but then sometimes we have to say, oh, I'm sorry, even my hand is busy. That means now I take care of me first. So I hope that was helpful for you. I want my ever close relative cheated on me and stole from me. Then yank that family away. And then instead of having the resentment, let go of the resentment. You know who it is, and that person is no longer welcome in your circle. Easy as that. Uh, well, it's not easy, but I hope that's helpful. Um, is there anything else I can please uh, preach it, sister? Love and blessings to you, Mark. I just love and adore you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Yes, whoever is Hannah, that's right. Um, well, my prayers are for Hannah also. She has type 1 diabetes. Oh, Mark. <sighs> diabetes, sugar. <sighs> Here's my prayer for you also and for Hannah. May she be surrounded in light and protected and her immune system is boosted. And Mark, um, would you please message me your address or Hannah's address? I would like to send something to you for Hannah, okay? Please do so. Um, anything else that I can say? All right, well, thank you for all the beautiful hearts. Thank you for the thumbs up. I hope this was beneficial. My name is Lisa Bubari, and uh, as a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant, domestic abuse consultant, I am here to help you, coach you, assist you, and be there for you. Uh, if you have any questions, suggestions, I am here. Look forward to seeing you next week or maybe even sooner. All right. Oh, talk to you soon. By the way, tomorrow is uh, another day. And may the light be with you. Look up, chin up, speak up. Bye-bye.